Hello and welcome to our much awaited special quarterly offering quarter se quarter tak I'm Lata Vikati and I'm Anuj Singhal and of course this is going to be a hugely important earnings season for markets Over the next one hour we will analyze what earnings will look like in the third quarter the questions we are asking today are how will government's demonetization move impact earnings the next big question which sector will face maximum heat and which sectors will survive the impact of demonetization that's not all over the next one hour we'll also find out if there is a risk of further earnings downgrade or will the base impact seen across many sectors eclipse the demonetization impact Sanjeev Basin of IIFL and Dhananjay Sinha of MK Global Financial Services will also be joining us on the show to give us their picks of the pack. Okay, but before that, let's start with an overall picture of earnings. Varinder Bansal now joins us with his take on what to expect this quarter. Varinder Well thank you so much the big question of course is whether the earnings downgrade will continue or not uh, every 17 earnings growth uh, the moment we started this uh, financial year was around 20% it has already come down to nearly 8 or 9% and for fy18 still people expecting a growth of nearly 15% so third quarter will be important to see whether that earnings downgrade continue or not uh, if you are watching out for third quarter numbers uh, kotak institutions uh, believes that sales growth will be nearly 2.8% for bsc 30 universe a beta growth of 5.5% and pad growth of nearly 1% of course the pad growth will be and sales growth will be due to poor base across many sectors like banks and metals uh, remember in second uh, quarter itself we had a pad growth of 5.1% so we will Will fall from 5% to as low as 1%. Uh, uh, if you're watching out for year and year growth of the PAT numbers for BSC 30, if you're watching out for sectors, as I said, the consumption will clearly take a hit. Whether it's uh, you know the FMCG, retail, or auto sector, and sectors which will have huge you know double, triple, quad, uh, quad. for numbers will be banks and metals because of the low base there was aqr for banks last year itself if you're watching out for y on y numbers uh, so that could be sectors which will look glorified numbers but if you're watching out for quarter and quarter clearly oil and gas and metals will stand out on a quarter and quarter basis for sales and building materials auto and it will be lagging behind in this quarter on a quarter and quarter basis thanks for indra let's take that across to our guest then uh, sanjeev and dhananjay good evening uh, to both of you uh, sanjeev uh, let me start with you of course the earnings have started with indus and bank and boy you know you can't complain those earnings but then that as we all know is the bluest of blue chip uh, your sense of uh, whether the earnings this time could actually surprise on the positive side well uh, you know there is so much of pessimism anuj and uh, also the nifty is telling you that a large part of that may have played out we are not at 79 we are closer to 8400 I think uh, maybe the demonetization devil was overdone. At least in uh, industry numbers, this, this doesn't seem to be any uh, negative uh, surprise. In fact, it's a surprise on the positive. The key point there is the 60 percent, 60 point, uh, 60 basis point reduction in cost, which has played out very well. And uh, despite uh, all the negativity, they've managed 4 percent as uh, their NIMS. which uh, which i think going ahead which will be difficult because lower cost of deposit means that there will be huge amount of pressure on performance and we know some of the psu banks will have even more uh, cre- lower credit cost so i think banks will be a sweet spot some of the psu banks particularly the large cap sbi bank of baroda where we are very bullish where like you rightly pointed out last year's aqr will have a huge magnifying effect this time and we think the right backs in maybe the case of an icici could be the silver lining so we think banks are in a sweet spot and selectly you know psu banks like state bank bank of baroda federal bank and in the private sector we think icici will stand out dhananjay your first thoughts uh, uh, because you know uh, the last two or three quarters uh, there were some green shoots uh, for this quarter of course uh, we have the demonetization angle thrown in uh, uh, and uh, that could have uh, you know changed things uh, how how are how are you approaching uh, the earning season so i think uh, as far as the uh, you know you you have rightly pointed out i think there was certain uh, built up of earnings and corporate performance that was happening in the uh, past three quarters Uh, and i think uh, we were expecting that you know that will actually give a fillip to the earnings growth in the following quarters after several years of sort of flattish uh, earnings if you look at nifty for instance uh, 
um so i think with respect to the demonetization i think uh, this will definitely have a sort of impact on the top line growth of companies and i think the leading indicator that we are looking at is the fact that credit growth for banking sector has actually declined to something like uh, 5.1% which is almost like a 60 year low and i think that that along with the fact that there is a sort of a deceleration uh, uh, of the transactional uh, part of the money supply also reflect the fact that you know for the for the non finance companies there will be a sort of a impact on the top line growth having said that i would say that uh, uh, with respect to the third quarter i think there will be a lot of distortion that can happen wherein uh, there are certain sectors which will see disproportionate impact on the adverse side and certain uh, certain sectors will actually see a certain uh, a better performance largely on the back of the fact that it is possible that many companies and sectors may have responded by by filling up inventories at channel levels etc so you know, for those sectors the the effect would actually come around in the following quarters important thing uh, that we are also noticing is that while we expect the top line growth to actually decelerate uh, because of the demonetization in the near term we are also seeing that the, the material costs have actually mm -hmm. gone up so raw material to sales ratio uh, may have actually risen um, and and that might over a period of time start impacting the impacting the uh, margins and also hence the corporate performance in terms of earnings so that is the near term sort of distortion sure. that we we are looking at it can happen this year it will sort of it will sort of uh, spread over the over the quarter ending december the following quarter so i think we'll have to look, look at the cumulative second mm -hmm. half of fy 17 to really assess what is happening so sanjeev is very confident that you know uh, and the market is showing that uh, moving on from 1700 to 8400 and of course dhananj is saying that maybe not this quarter but uh, some quarters down the line you will have the impact yeah i got that. most of what uh, both of them said but uh, anuj we also saw those innocent bank numbers and Uh, uh, the uh, South Indian bank yes. numbers. Neither of them showed the strain of uh, SME or MSME strain. In fact, they showed top-notch uh, uh, asset quality. So, just very quickly, Dhananjay, uh, do you think we could be in for some kind of actually positive surprise? Simply because year ago the banks were in a dump because of that asset quality review. Year ago, steel was in a dump because you know the Chinese attacks seem to be rather strong. So yes. Uh, yes. may we get uh, positive surprises in these two financials and uh, metals compared to what the demonetization psyche has prepared us for? Yeah, so I think uh, there my response is definitely the fact that you know uh, the fact that commodity prices have risen may have actually uh, sort of had a spillover effect on some of the uh, sensitive sectors such as metals uh, and you know also that you have a very adverse base effect for capital goods for last year so there there is a sort of a year on year statistical upside from there but what what i am basically mm. looking at is that if you look at the first and second quarter of this year mm. where you had the impact of the aqr which was actually uh, sort of absorbed by the banking sector uh, my uh, Uh, my assumption before the demonetization was that it would actually translate into better uh, better credit growth uh, and and hence banking sector performance but what has happened is that um, on a sequential basis it is possible that the credit cost will go up uh, with a decline in credit credit growth okay. and my my sure. assessment is that for every 100 basis point decline in credit growth gnpa grows by 300 basis point so okay. that's a long term sensitivity that we have actually calculated oh. okay yeah. let's let's do one thing let's now take it sector by sector uh, uh it sector will be the big one of course uh, because uh, it's facing a lot of headwinds uh, reema tendulkar will tell us what to expect from the big companies reema Well, it is expected to be a subdued quarter for IT on account of seasonality, fewer working days, year-end furloughs, as well as because of cross-currency headwinds on account of the dollar strength versus other currencies like the euro and pound. For Infosys, it's going to be the weakest quarter compared to peers because of the RBS deal cancellation. The so most people on the street believe that the company will maintain its full year guidance of 8 to 9 percent. For TCS, Q3 will be better than what we usually see, and that's because that 180 crore India contract got deferred from Q2 to Q3. 
for Wipro, the company is likely to deliver compared to their guidance that they had set up. Their guidance for Q2 was zero to uh, for Q3 was zero to two percent. Um, for the coming quarter, the guidance could be strong because there will be a two-month contribution of an acquisition called Aperio. HCL Technology, um, Q, the previous quarter was good. This quarter too is expected to be very strong, better than what peers have reported, and the company is likely to maintain its full-year guidance of 12 to 14 percent. All right, Reema, thanks for that. Let's handle uh, one more sector and then go on to our guests again. The sector which uh, took a hit in demand because of uh, the demonetization move, obviously the auto sector. Sonia, what are you expecting in the numbers? Well, for the auto sector, the revenues this time are expected to be subdued due to the impact of demonetization. Two-wheelers could get impacted the most. But from the four-wheeler space, don't expect too much of an impact on Maruti. In fact, some of their highest-selling products, the Brezza and the Baleno, will make sure that revenue growth is pretty strong over there. For Bajaj Auto, though, the volumes have been under pressure, both domestic due to demonetization as well as exports. So we expect the profits to fall over there. Uh, for Aisha Motors, it will be the steadiest of the lot. Royal Enfield sales have not been impacted at all this time around and the margins will be healthy at 30% plus. And finally, Ashok Leyland, the sales were hit only in the month of December because of demonetization. Otherwise, the volumes are fine. Volume growth has been about 6 odd percent and margins will be stable as well. Okay, Sonia, thanks a lot for that. Let's take those two sectors to our guests. Uh, Sanjeev, uh, correct me if, uh, if I'm wrong, uh, you have been taking contra buy calls on IT actually. Uh, your, your, your thoughts on uh, you know, how, we, how will you approach uh, uh, IT earnings season and even autos actually? Yeah, so Anuj, on IT we have a clear view, you know, Infosys is going to see a deterioration, the company has come and gone twice and I think uh, seasonality will play out even for TCS. We hope that they can maintain that 26 to 27 percent margin guidance. Uh, the other part which would do well would be stocks like Wipro, HCL Tech and Mindtree. Mindtree, by the way, you know, has upped its guidance and uh, they, they saw the volume return. I think that could be the standout going over there. Uh, what we have to see is how the Trump uh, uh, swearing in plays out, what is corporate spending in the US and what would be the action on the H1 visa. These are the three empirical problems I think. However, we think that after these two quarters, there would be a lot of return of uh, volume growth and if margins can be maintained, I think the stocks would be relatively, you know, very, very reasonably priced like they have been. So at 2200, I say TCS was priced at 15, one year, uh, one year forward, 15 times and I think that's the cheapest it has been in three years. So what we are saying is you will have to look three quarters ahead if you want to be in IT because most, most of the bad news would have already been in the price. As far as auto goes, it's clearly a segmentation between two-wheelers and four-wheelers. Maruti would see uh, problems and pressure on the margin in the larger segment, but that would be ably made up by volumes, growth in the, in the Breezer and the, you know, Bellino side. And I think that could pleasantly surprise on the upside, also coupled with the fact that the yen dollar has been, uh, you know, giving them a huge, uh, it will give them almost eight basis points on the on, on the on the appreciation of the dollar versus the yen okay. uh, for for uh, hero honda and um, bajaj auto i think it would be a vertical downside of at least a 25 to 30 percent hit whereas uh, like you rightly pointed out aisher motor would be the actual icing on the cake where you mm -hmm. could actually maybe see a positive surprise on the upside okay well uh, uh, dhananjay uh, your best pick in it and best in autos so, uh, as far as uh, as far as uh, IT is concerned, we are sort of uh, more positive on the mid cap space where we believe that there will be a sort of a cyclical tailwind. So, uh, we are sort of positive on uh, Mindtree and Hexaware in tier uh, in, in uh, tier two space. And uh, in the tier one, we our bet is uh, Tech Mahindra. So that is that is something that we have been maintaining. Okay. All right. Uh, any uh, specific uh, pick in the auto auto ancillary? range so in the auto space uh, uh, you know uh, we we think that uh, ashok leland can actually surprise positively okay. mahindra mahindra i think the tractor volumes have been have been good so i think uh, there is certain resilience that is there but mm -hmm. otherwise uh, two wheeler space can actually be surprising negatively especially uh, you know all the two wheelers all the two wheelers you know sure. if you consider 
uh, you know, Hero Motors, TCS, and uh, Bajaj. Bajaj can be, be specifically more more on the downside in terms of surprises. Yeah, that was writ large in the November and December numbers. So take your point on that. We have to take a quick break. We are coming back with uh, uh, lots more sectors to analyze. Uh, heavyweights, FMCG, and banking is what we will look at, and their Q3 numbers in a minute.